Welcome in to the Ravens Rundown, powered by Chad Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. Coming up on today's show, we have an injury update on J.K. Dobbins. Also, we will look at the NFC North playoff picture, and one NFL analyst and former player says that this Ravens team is arguably the greatest Ravens team of all time. We'll dissect all of that and more coming up in just a few moments from right now. Let's begin with J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins we have not seen a whole lot of in 2022. There was a lot of excitement, of course, about him coming back this season, playing for the first time in a very long time, and we haven't seen him play actually since week six. Made a return, and then he was gone again as he underwent another knee surgery. Now, we did receive some good news in regards to J.K. Dobbins. According to Ravens head coach John Harbaugh, the surgery that he had recently was a smashing success. And Harbaugh went on to say that Dobbins should be back in about three to four weeks, just right in time for the playoff push. And J.K. Dobbins, in an interview with WJZ had this to say about his most recent surgery, saying, I didn't get re-injured. I didn't hurt myself or anything. I just didn't feel like myself. There was some stuff in my knee that was making me feel uh, not like myself. It wasn't bad. I could have still played, but I'd rather be 100% going into the playoffs towards the end of the year so I could really do what I really need to do to help the team win. So very interesting from uh, J.K. Dobbins that uh, he kind of felt the need to set the record straight. Personally, I don't care if it was a re-injury, what he needed to get surgery for. The truth of the matter is the main thing is that he's taking care of it, that he's trying to get right in time for the postseason. And credit to J.K. Dobbins that he's putting the team first. He's taking the necessary steps to be the best version of himself for this team to have their best chance to make a deep run in the postseason. Sacrificing more time on the football field to get 100% healthy. Kudos to J.K. Dobbins for taking care of business there. So, will J.K. Dobbins play well when he returns? We're going to go over some numbers for you. The last time we saw J.K. Dobbins wasn't great. Is he going to be better? Is it going to be like the version of J.K. Dobbins we saw in 2020? If you think so, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Let me know in the comment section below. Why for yes, in for no. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. Get your votes in. Why for yes, in for no. If you think that J.K. Dobbins will play well when the uh, Ravens running back makes his return. So here are the season stats for J.K. Dobbins. As you can see, in the four games he played, not great. The best game he probably had was against Buffalo when he had a touchdown run and 41 rushing yards, but wasn't quite the same J.K. Dobbins that we're accustomed to. And the current depth chart for the Ravens includes Gus Edwards as your number one back. He's looked good when he's made his return. Kenyon Drake uh, has shown some flashes as well. Then we've seen Justice Hill and Mike Davis uh, kind of be in and out of sorts this year. Not really consistent uh, between those two, but Nonetheless, uh, with this running back room, I think the, the way I look at this, you know, yes, J.K. Dobbins did not look great the last time that we saw him on the football field, but with the way the depth chart is and just the way that we can't trust the running back room as a whole, it doesn't matter to me that J.K. Dobbins didn't play great the last time that we saw him because – Quite frankly, this Ravens team needs all the help they can get in the run game at this point in time. They'll take anybody. And I'm excited about what J.K. Dobbins is going to bring to the table because now he feels like he's 100% healthy. Another option for this running back room, let's see what they can put together. So the, the rushing numbers, Lamar Jackson, far and away the leading rusher on this Ravens team, with 635 yards on the ground. He's averaging over seven yards a carry, which is just insane in two touchdown runs. But you can see there's a significant drop-off after that, and the Ravens are trying to still find their feature back 
J.K. Dobbins still has an opportunity to potentially be that guy. We'll see. So when you look at the Ravens running back room and where the situation stands right now, who is the Ravens' best running back? Is it J.K. Dobbins? Is it Gus Edwards? Is it Kenyon Drake? Who is the feature back of this group? Who are you riding with? Let me know in the comments section. Give me one name who you think the Ravens' best running back is at this point in time. We're covering the Ravens each and every day here on the Ravens Rundown with daily Baltimore Ravens news and rumors. And we are also covering all the latest trades, free agency, game previews, injury news, everything and more. It's all in one place. You ain't alive if you ain't subscribed to the Ravens Rundown. That's what we say around here. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. Subscribe now. Hit that sub button. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Could the Ravens run away with the AFC North? That is a very interesting question to think about when you talk about this Baltimore Ravens team as they come back from the bye week and are in pretty decent shape. And we'll get to the odds in just a second, but this team, heavy favorites to win the division. Here is the AFC North standings where things stack up right now. You can see the Ravens with a one-game advantage over the Cincinnati Bengals, or as I like to say, the Bungles. And here's something to think about, too. It really is like two games because they have the head-to-head over the Bengals winning that first game. And so you think about that beyond the Bengals, the Browns and the Steelers both at three and six. The the Browns, what's interesting is that, yeah, you're going to get Deshaun Watson back, But based on the way the season's gone so far at this point, the deficit is probably going to be too much to overcome for the Browns to be a factor in the division. It's down to two teams, basically, the Ravens and the Bengals at this point in time. And you can bet on the division race. We'll show you the odds here in just one second, but you can bet on the division race. You can bet on weekly game action. Also, uh, you could bet on stuff in the NBA, in uh, college football, whatever you're feeling, get your bets in now. Chatsports.com slash bets, promo code chat125. But $100 down to get 125% deposit bonus. The Ravens, we mentioned heavy favorites in the division. Here's the numbers. Minus 500. And that's something for having a one-game lead? Minus 500. Heavy. Indeed. The Bengals at plus 375. The Browns at plus 3,000. The Steelers at plus 4,000. Get your bets in. Let me know what you're going to go with at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. And tell me in the comment section, are you betting on the Ravens? Do you like their odds? I like their odds. Let's say you. True or false? The Ravens will win the AFC North. If that's a true statement, type T for true. If that's a lie, type F for false. Let me know in the comments section. The Ravens will win the AFC North. We think it's going to happen. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. So one of the things that the Ravens have going for them is their strength of schedule. And you take a look at the numbers here, and it's pretty interesting. The rest of the way, the opponents that the Ravens have left have a combined 24-44 and record. That's a winning percentage just a little bit higher than 35%. Awful. Great news for Baltimore, though. This is not the BCS or the college football playoff where you have to have a big strength of schedule to help yourself out in your playoff hopes. That doesn't matter here. This bodes well for Baltimore. And of the other five teams that you can see here, the Chiefs are the only team they're competing against when it comes playoff seed-wise that have a similar situation of going up against opponents with a bad strength of schedule here. So – That's very good news for the Ravens going forward as they try to compete to get uh, one of those top seeds in the AFC at this point. And here's what the schedule itself looks like. When you come off the bye, they'll be taking on the Carolina Panthers this Sunday. The Panthers are awful, and Baker Mayfield's back to being the starting quarterback, and the Ravens have a 5-3 record all-time against Baker Mayfield, dating back to his days against Cleveland. Then you travel to Jacksonville to take on the lowly Jags. Don't know what Jags team's going to show up. They've been a mess all year. The Broncos, at the beginning of the year, that sounded like an exciting game, but Russell Wilson's been a bum, and Nathaniel Hackett doesn't know how to coach football games. They've been a problem. 
uh, all year. And then you go to December 11th. You take on the Steelers. The Steelers, always a tough test anytime you play Pittsburgh. So we won't write off the Steelers, although they're having a down year. And then you finish out the final stretch. You face the Browns for the second time this year. Deshaun Watson should be back for the Browns for that game. You get the Falcons to celebrate Christmas, which we'll find out who the superior bird is. The Steelers again, that time on New Year's Day. And then you wrap up the regular season with a road visit to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals there. And Brendan Marshall, the former wide receiver who spent some time uh, around the league, was a really good player. Now he's an analyst uh, for Inside the NFL on Paramount Plus, I believe that is, one of those streaming services. Anyways, this is what Marshall had to say. Some very kind words, maybe a bit over the top, to be quite frank, about the Ravens. He said, the Baltimore Ravens is the best team in the NFL, and it's not even close. I just want to let everybody know that the Baltimore Ravens, this may be the year that they win the Super Bowl. This may be the best Baltimore Ravens team we've ever seen. I won't go there, but I think Ravens fans at least appreciate that from Brandon Marshall. Nonetheless, well, I mean, you'll take it. Uh, that might be a bit much, but best Ravens team we've ever seen? Uh, we'll see. This team's got some weaknesses, but... Nonetheless, they're right there in the thick of things. We'll see how things turn out. What will the Ravens' final record be? Six and three at the bye. Schedule's about to get a lot easier the rest of the way. How are they going to finish up? Let me know in the comments section. Predict the Ravens' final record. As always, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Tyler Jones Live, talking about your Baltimore Ravens and those social media platforms. And we will see you next time right here on the Ravens Rundown.